Czech Republic. He was a refugee from communism. He didn't speak English. The only job he could get was as a dishwasher on exit nine of the New Jersey Turnpike at the Howard Johnson's restaurant. He was working there to learn English. And one day he said to his colleague, I am new in this country. Where is the greatest place in the world to live that I should try to devote my life to? And his colleague said, there's no answer other than Greenwich, Connecticut. <laughs> my father went to night school. It took him 20 years. He got his BA, he got his MBA, he got his PhD at night. We grew up in the Bronx, Brooklyn, and Queens. And when I was three years old, I asked my father, what is the box that you have in the closet that you keep throwing your change in every night? And he said, son, that's the Greenwich box. That's the box of our future. It took my father 15 years of putting pennies, dimes, quarters in that box. And in 1972, he said, we're ready. I have enough money to buy the smallest of houses in Greenwich, right across from Central Middle School. And so he moved to Greenwich. And my life and the life of my brother, David Ledecky, who's here today, Katie's father, class of 1978, changed forever. I want to thank my dad, but more than that, can I ask all of the graduates to please stand up for a minute? Please do so. Now, look around for your parents, your relatives, your siblings, and friends in the stand. They deserve a standing ovation from you. Give them your love and your applause for what they've done in your life. Coming in tonight, you can sit down now, thank you. Coming in tonight, a parent grabbed me and said, Mr. Ledecky, I sit through all these commencement speeches. I want you to say one thing. I thought it would be something very important. I took my pen out. Please tell the graduates, remember to call your parents next year. Don't forget. In hockey, we often talk about puck luck. When I moved to Greenwich my very first day, I was walking a dog at Central Middle School. A woman rolled over her station wagon to me, rolled the window down and said, excuse me, are you new in town? I couldn't believe it, how would she know that? She said, I know every basset hound in town and I've never seen your dog. <laughs> write your name down, write your phone number down. The next week I came home, my mother said, this odd woman has called, she sounds very nice, she invited you over for a pool party. Now when you grow up in Queens and Brooklyn and the Bronx, you think pool party means you're gonna be shooting pool, not going to a pool party at somebody's house. That woman who absolutely changed my life as well was Mrs. Isabel Malkin. Her son, Scott Malkin, 50 years later, is my partner in the New York Islanders. Thank you, Mrs. Malkin. Hockey is life. At least if you own a team, you think it is. Why do I say that? It goes by faster than a slap shot. You want to avoid the penalty box at all costs. In life, you have to practice a lot. You need good coaches throughout your life and teammates too. Find something you love as much as hockey players love hockey and try to become great at it. But failure happens. Embrace the failure. A really successful, highly paid hockey player scores a goal once on every 10 to 15 shots that they take. The success of failure is a powerful emotion and one that you'll experience time and time again. 
Focus on what you can do well. Never stop learning. Never give up on your dreams. Be resilient. Give back to your community. And most importantly, be kind and be grateful. As Ted Lasso, the great philosopher, says, believe and treat everyone as if they're your mother, your sister, or your daughter. You won't go wrong. Your father, your brother, your son, you won't go wrong. But failure again. So a wonderful quote from the great philosopher Jokic of the Denver Nuggets. He said, if you want to be a success, you need a couple of years. You need to be bad, then you need to be good. Then when you're good, you need to fail again. And then when you fail, you're going to figure it out. Life certainly is not a straight line. Take chances for the opportunity that you want to go for because you can always go backwards. You can always come home. And if your home is Greenwich, Connecticut, you are truly blessed. Today you graduate during an artificial intelligence chat, GPT revolution. Information is beginning to flow like water. Several of my pals sent me chat AI generated commencement speeches. And unfortunately they were better than what I'm saying tonight. But I didn't want to be accused of plagiarism. The serious question is what will your generation do with this abundant and endless information? You will have that responsibility for the greatness behind you and the generation ahead of you. I will tell you this, direct human connection and communication will mean more than ever before during this revolution. In the stands today, they didn't have to come, but they're here, are several of my classmates that I met over 50 years ago. Bob D'Angelo from the Y, who gave the commencement address here one year. Russ Pruner, Steve Gordon, Casey O'Brien, John Horan, Fred Rossetti, and the list goes on. I'm blessed to have had these people in my life as I failed many, many times, and as I succeeded once or twice. They were there to applaud me and to pick me up off the floor. Now it's your turn. You are graduating from what I think is clearly the number one public high school in America. You actually have a great responsibility. I want you to look to your fellow graduates to your left, to your right, in the front, and behind you. These are the people who should make a difference in your lives for the rest of your life. You truly are the best of the best. I pray that you will stay connected for the rest of your lives. Friendship in our complicated, complex world matters now more than ever. Unfortunately, this is probably the last time all 663 of you will be in one place together. But I want to urge you with all my might to stay in touch, not by just text or FaceTime or TikTok. Stay in touch by being together. Stay in touch by trying to find each other. Stay in touch when you travel to a city and you know your friends are there. Now, easy for me as the commencement speaker to stand up here and say all that. Some of these things are platitudes, some of them are trite. But I want to back it up. I've talked to your class leaders. You're going off into the world. 600 plus of you are going to colleges. Others are going into the military, taking a gap year, working in the community, volunteering. Everybody is doing something fabulous. But on your first winter break over the holidays, I want you to have your very first reunion at my new home, UBS Arena. I want to invite all 663 of you to come to a game during winter break to enjoy each other and to stay connected with each other. Enjoy the journey. Remember how blessed you are. Remember how many people would love to live in this wonderful, marvelous town led by our selectmen. And finally, shoot the puck! Thank you.